1960, Alfred Hitchcock's classic film Psycho hit theaters. A film that dazzled audiences with revolutionary editing techniques and subverted their expectations with an unconventional, unpredictable plot. Psycho has left an indelible mark on culture and to this day is held up as one of the greatest horror films of all time, if not one of the greatest films in general. But at least one man thought it was a little bit lacking. It needed a little something. Alfred Hitchcock didn't really go all the way. That man was one Herschel Gordon Lewis. At the time, a director of softcore porn movies known as Nudie Cuties. Lewis felt that with Psycho, Hitchcock had cheated a little bit. You see people die, but you don't really see the process of them dying. You see the knife, but you don't see the knife going in. You don't see the guts and the gore. He knew what he had to do. So armed with a shoestring budget and a ragtag crew, H.G. Lewis goes down to Miami to right this wrong. They spend four days shooting a film that, in its own way, would also forever alter the course of film history. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Blood Feast. This video is sponsored by Shudder. Shudder is my favorite streaming service. It's basically the Netflix of horror. This month, I'm gonna recommend Female Prisoner number 701 Scorpion, a classic Japanese revenge film starring Meiko Kaji, and Shudder has the entire series. Shudder is the exclusive home for found footage hit VHS 94, a Shudder original. Binge the latest seasons of Creepshow and Slasher, both exclusively on Shudder. Catch new episodes of drag competition show The Boulet Brothers Dragula and new documentary series Behind the Monsters on the origins and pop culture dominance of your favorite modern movie monsters. New exclusives this month include Nicolas Cage in Prisoners of the Ghostland and the killer shark movie Great White. Shudder's expertly curated collection includes must-see titles like Vicious Fun, the Mortuary Collection, and PG, Psycho Goreman, plus all the best horror documentaries and the hit Creepshow TV series from executive producer Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead. To try Shudder free for 30 days, go to shudder.com and use code WANG. Finally time to cover one of my all-time favorite movies by one of my all-time favorite directors. H.G. Lewis's Blood Feast. It's considered by some to be the first gore movie ever. Although there are other contenders I've seen brought up. For example, I just saw a discussion of Il Caso Valdemar from 1936, which employs techniques that remind me of things you'd see Fulci do half a century later. That being said, that one's a short film and not a feature. But regardless of the legitimacy of this film's claim to the number one spot, there's no denying its significance. So with all that said, well, let's get into it. A woman arrives home as what sounds to be the work drum on a slave ship beats away. After the radio tells her that women should stay inside because of all the murders, we get that real 1960s experience when she takes out her pointy 1960s titties and goes to take a bath but not before setting down an extremely scholarly text. Ancient weird religious rites. It's not very culturally sensitive reading. And coincidentally, she herself is about to become part of an ancient weird religious rite. It's that man we've all seen in our dreams. He plunges a knife right into her, collecting a nondescript chunk of bloody flesh, which we soon learn is apparently eyeball meat somehow. And right from the get-go, we see it all. Butcher Pete's chopping that meat right through her whole fucking leg and he stuffs that amputated leg into a sack as we zoom in on her exposed leg bone. That's right, how you like them apples, Hitchcock? Now we get a look inside the Homicide Bureau. Not to be confused with the Homicide Bureau. Just working with a homicidal maniac, that's all. I don't know how they know the killer is gay. This looks like one of those long, hard ones. Seems like a little bit of a plot hole to me. Especially since Detective Pete and Police Chief Frank are baffled by the lack of clues in this recent killing spree. But they know that all these killings are connected as all the victims are found with different organs removed. And now we jump to Fouad Ramsey's exotic catering. Hey, that guy looks kind of familiar. It's kind of an interesting choice to just show him to us immediately and dispense with any possible sense of mystery this movie could have had. And I'm only being half sarcastic here because, I mean, this ostensibly being the first gore movie, it makes sense to do away with any other pretenses and make it loud and clear that we're just here to watch people die. Meet Dorothy Fremont. What's going on, man? You hard of hearing, bro? Mrs. Fremont is throwing a dinner party for a daughter. I'm giving a dinner party in two weeks for my daughter. She wants something a little different from normal. She's in luck because Mr. Ramsey's has just the idea. Have you ever had 
An Egyptian feast? You know, growing up, I had no idea what Egyptian people actually looked like. So I'd see, like, Egyptian people on TV shows and movies. Actually, now that I think about it, a lot of these things were actually from the 60s as well. I guess in the 60s, people were just like weeaboos about Egypt. My daughter, Suzette, is a student of Egyptian culture. But normally the Egyptians I'd see on TV were just white people with uh, funky makeup or outfits. This right here, though, is probably my favorite vision of what Egyptians might look like. They're just Italians, but blue. Mr. Ramses tells her about the ancient feast that he can put on for her. It has not been served for five thousand years. And then he convinces her with a hypnotizing stare. Wouldn't it be some shit if by me showing you that shot of him hypnotizing stare, that it convinced all of you to have a 5,000 year old murder feast? I mean, now that I think about it, that kind of happens in H.G. Lewis's Wizard of Gore. But I'm sure you'll be fine. Things will be arranged just as the feast of the goddess was given 5,000 years ago. Gee, that sounds kind of like some kind of weird ancient religious rite. Look at the goddess Ishtar there, just face palming, going, ugh, will this guy shut the fuck up? Fucking simp. A woman gasps as she reads a newspaper about the killings. Legs cut off. I can just picture that being a gamer from Mars thumbnail or something. Meanwhile, a couple is making out on the beach, but the girl doesn't want to smash because, you know, she's afraid of the murders and all. But she's got nothing to worry about. I'm not gonna let anyone hurt you. The lie detector test determined <laughs> that was a lie. Wad Ramses takes her brains to gain her knowledge, and we zoom in on the aftermath and also, there's a snake, I guess, because they got those in Egypt. And considering that up to this point, people hadn't really seen anything like this in theaters, the gore is actually pretty impressive. And like I spoke of in the Wizard of Gore video, this one also uses copious amounts of animal guts to, to make the gore come to life. And it gets the job done. Aha. Uh -huh. But the killer messed up. He left the witness alive to tell the tale of what happened. She wanted to leave! She was scared! What'd you got for us, Tony? What did he look like? I can't remember! I can't remember! Take it easy, son. And the girl's hysterical parents can't help that much either. Although they do remember that she was a member of a book club. But hey, at least the feast is coming together. But it still needs a little something. Luckily, you got a drunk couple wandering into a nearby motel. And while the dude stumbles off, Ramses gets in there and hits her with the mandible claw. But he does what Mick Foley could never. Just rips her whole fucking tongue out. Because, you know, no 5,000-year-old Egyptian feast is complete without the lengua tacos. Speaking of which, Miss Fremont now tells her daughter Suzette about the feast. But Suzette doesn't know if she's in a partying mood, what with all the murders. I just shudder when I think about that butcher. But fuck that, mother wants to party. Anyway, the dinner party Saturday will take our minds off all this horrible killing. Suzette, it will be a wonderful surprise. I just can't wait to see the look on her face on Saturday when she sees this surprise. You know, the surprise that she just got told about. But anyway, Suzette's gotta go. You see, she's running late for the class she's taking. The class that she's taking about ancient Egyptian gods. What a wild coincidence. You just got this crazy Egyptian killer walking around, Fwad Ramses. He's just going around murdering in service of an ancient god. And now here she is in a class about a guy named Ramses and an ancient Egyptian god. I know it was just a goofy little horror movie, but it's just a little too convenient. Oh yeah, and also the detective is taking the class too. And they're just in time to hear about the Feast of Ishtar. I don't know, I think Jake Roberts and Randy Savage did it better, although granted there was no heart removal that time. That seems more like an FMW type of thing. And now, for the most 1963 line of the whole movie. Oh! How could a race of people actually follow such a vile cult? What do you mean by that? And over the course of this conversation, we learn that Suzette and Detective Pete are actually dating and he's going to be at the surprise feast. You know, that is unless he's dealing with one of these pesky murders. But with all these pesky murders going on, I guess to be safe, he ought to give her a ride home. Do you know now that I've got you to myself all alone? I don't know what to do with it. Sex. You're supposed to do sex. But before she can give him the birds and the bees talk, they're interrupted by another murder. And once again, the victim was left alive. She's probably gonna die, but she ain't dead yet. Her eyes are gouged out, and her face was peeled off, but her mouth still works. She describes a horrible old man with wild eyes, and he was yelling something as he did it. Eat her! Oh. 
And now, tell me, did you hear that? If you did hear that, I'm not sure if that sound is actually a part of the soundtrack or some weird audio glitch, but to me, I'm pretty sure that was a sad trumpet sound as she fucking croaked. Like, is she lost on the Price is Right or something like that? Well, the killer must have thought she was dead. It's a miracle she wasn't. Well, she is now. <laughs> Ramses receives a letter from someone named Trudy requesting a copy of the book he wrote. That book being, of course, Ancient Weird Religious Rites. It's all coming together. Well, it just so happens that Trudy is hanging out at the pool with Suzette. As we watch the gals frolic in their bikinis for several minutes from a variety of angles, it turns out that Ramses is watching with us, just waiting for his chance to strike. And then he gets it. With all these kidnappings and murders to deal with, it looks like Pete's gonna be a little late to the party. But as he tells this to Suzette, he learns a few more details about it. Ishtar? Well, I hope it isn't exactly like Flanders described it. Oh, what's, the, what's that? The Feast of Who What Now? Huh, sounds kind of familiar. Wow, what a wild and crazy thing to be happening while you have all these mysterious murders. But Trudy's not dead yet. She's tied up in Ramsey's back room as he uses a wet mop to paint her back red. And Ishtar looks on once again like, dude, what the fuck? Eventually, she dies of blood loss, which works out for Ramsey's because he needs that blood for his 5,000-year-old gazpacho. And it was a bit too late for Trudy, but finally, Detective Pete puts the pieces together. Ishtar. He quickly calls the professor and asks about Fouad Ramses, who he learns wrote a little book called Ancient Weird Religious Rites, aka the book that he found with the dead body all the way at the beginning of the movie. I think we got our killer. Gets time to check out that catering shop, where Ramses just happens to be in the middle of cooking that leg. And here's what gets me though. So in the time span of this film, it's been at least two weeks since he cut that leg off. And as far as we can see, it looks like he's done absolutely nothing to freeze the leg or preserve it or anything. So what I'm getting at is, say this whole feast, it wasn't just a, a ritual to awaken a 5,000 year old weird Egyptian god. Say he just, you know, he wanted to feed people humans to get his jollies. Everyone is going to get food poisoning. You're a professional caterer, yet the foot taco guy can do cannibal dinners better. Get with the program, man. One star on Yelp. This Ramsey's guy threw my daughter a party and... Egypt us. The police arrive, but they're too late. Ramsey's is getting ready to party. I mean, he appears to have left behind his salad, but I mean... You don't win friends with salad! You don't win friends with salad! Back at the party, Ramsey's informs everyone that for the feast to be extra authentic, Suzette has to accompany him to the kitchen and lay down on the counter. You know, to bless the feast. I mean, it worked. Also, she's got to keep her eyes closed, too. Whoops, uh, let's try that again. And it looks like the jig is up. Better make a run for it. Well, I mean, a hobble for it. After all... As you can see, my dear, I am an old man. The police chase Ramses to the local garbage dump, where he conveniently finds a garbage truck driven by a driver who is completely oblivious to the police chase going on right behind them. Extremely lucky for Ramses, who just jumps in the back of the garbage truck. But like I said, this garbage truck driver is kind of oblivious. So... He died a fitting death. The garbage he was. And there you have it. Blood Feast. One of my favorite bad movies of all time. A movie that throughout the years I've made countless dates sit through. And one that despite its badness is actually quite enjoyable and has an important place in the history of horror movies. And when watching this, like I said before, you have to keep in mind that people seeing this in a movie theater, they hadn't seen this level of violence or gore on the screen before. This was basically uncharted territory and... Especially with that in mind, they did a surprisingly good job with the effects. I mean, listen, I'll take stinky animal guts over plastic-looking CG bullshit any day. But anyway, that's all for now. If you like this video, check out my video about the Redditor who fed his amputated foot to his friends. I'm out.